Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus is the Christ, the Holy One, the Son of God. He has revealed himself throughout the Epiphany season to be some incredible things. Today is no different. Today, what he shows us, who he shows us he is, is no less important or no less insignificant than any of his other titles or roles or offices that he fills in this place and in this life. Today, Jesus reveals himself to be a fisherman. Now, I realize that doesn't sound like a whole lot, not when you compare it to what we have seen him do in the past, even last week when we saw and heard of him casting out demons by his word, that he showed that he has victory over all evil, over hell, and even over the devil himself by the speaking of his word. When you compare that to catching a fish, being a fisherman doesn't seem like very much, does it? seems rather insignificant. It seems like it doesn't really have that big of a role to play. But when you consider the theological implications of it, consider that these fish, they are fish, but they are also men and women, we see that it is by no means any less to say that Jesus is the great fisherman. He has proven that he has power over all things spiritual. He proved it last week as he cast out a demon, cast out and rebuked even fevers and illnesses and sicknesses from the people. He shows his power and authority over all things spiritual in this place. But today, he shows that he has power and he has authority not only over the spiritual things, but the material, the earthly The worldly things, too, are under his power and under his control. All of creation, even down to the fish of the depths of the sea, Jesus has command over by his word. And if Jesus holds all power and all authority over the spiritual things in this life and in this place, and all of the earthly and all of the material things, in this place and life, well, that is some good news for you. It's good news because it means that Jesus is able to do what we cannot. That even when we are not in control, Jesus is. That even when we fail, Jesus is able to do what we cannot, simply by his word. That's what we see him do for Simon today. That Simon and his fishing crew go out throughout the night and toil. They fish. They they cast out their nets and they bring them back in. And they they cast out their nets and they bring them back in. And again, they, they cast out their nets and they bring them back in. And every single time they bring in their nets, they're empty. They catch not even one single fish. All night long, they fail. And finally, when the day breaks, they bring their boats to the shore and they are cleaning up after themselves, washing their nets and putting them away, defeated, empty-handed, completely with nothing to show for all of their efforts. But that is when Jesus steps on the boat. That is when Jesus gets on his boat and tells them to put out into the, sea, to the lake. To even go out into the depths of the lake after fishing all night long in the time and the place where you would not expect to catch fish. And then, by his word, he tells them to cast their nets again. Now, don't get me wrong, this is no insignificant command. This is no small task and call to Simon. That means that they have to get out their nets again after they had just put them away. 
They have to cast out their nets again that they'd been doing all night long with no success. They had to bring in those nets again, bring them back to shore, which means they were going to have to wash the nets all over again and put them away all over again after they had just finished doing that very thing. But they do it. At Christ's command, by his word, they cast out those nets and they bring in a catch of fish bigger than anything they could have imagined. Can you imagine it? Think about it. How big this catch of fish must have had to be. Certainly one that was too big to even be counted. But these Fish begin to tear the fishing nets, that they begin to sink not just one, but two boats. That is how big this catch of fish is. That these nets that are designed, they are made, they are engineered for being cast out into the sea and and catching fish for the very purpose of hauling them back in, are so overwhelmed by this catch of fish that they begin to break. Yet they don't. And these boats, not just one boat, but two boats, that are designed and made and engineered for the specific purpose of catching fish, of hauling those fish aboard and holding them until the end of their fishing trip, perhaps what would have lasted all night long, are so overwhelmed of not just one boat, but two boats in this one single catch of fish that they begin to fail. They begin to sink, but neither boat does. That is how good of a fisherman Jesus is. That is the power of Jesus' word. His word is able to do what we cannot. And I know what you're thinking. Well, that all sounds good for the fisherman, but what about your average Joe? What about you and me? Well, For us, that same power, that same authority, that same ability to do what we cannot, to do even more than we could ever imagine. That same word of Jesus is spoken to us. That same Jesus works for us. Does for us that which we are unable to do. That he was then, and he still is now, even to this day, in power and authority over all of heaven and earth, over all things spiritual and all things material. Jesus is in control, even when we fail. Even when we fail to do the things that we are trained to do, even when Simon fails to catch the fish that his livelihood depends upon him doing, even when what we have trained our bodies and our hearts and our minds to do, even when we fail, Jesus' words to us are clear. Even when we are brought to our knees, falling at the knees of Jesus, confessing with Simon, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. The Lord does not depart. The Lord does not leave us poor, miserable sinners. But he speaks his clear word. Do not be afraid. When you fail, when you fail to overcome sin, when you fail to keep and do those Ten Commandments, when you fail to be the student or the teacher, the the employee or the boss that you know that you can be and then you should be, when you fail to be the brother or sister, the son or daughter, when you fail to be the friend and neighbor even to those that you love, do not be afraid. Jesus is your fisherman. His word does what we are unable to do. His word does more than we could ever imagine that it might do by his word. 
become flesh. He dies and rises to overcome every sin, overcome every ill of body and soul, every power and every force, whether it be spiritual or material, every evil. He has power. He has authority. He has control over it all. He is crucified. He is raised from the dead for you. So that that sin, that failure, that thing which is beyond our control, that thing which is greater than us, does not define us, does not dictate who we are. That is done by his word, that very word which bespeaks us righteous. So by his word, we are no longer the fish that are swimming in the lake of Gennesaret. We are no longer those fish swimming in the uncertain waters of this life. We are no longer those fish that are in the depths of hell. We, you, are his. He does for you that which you are unable to do. Because it's not up to the fish. It's not up to the fish to jump into the boat. It might be nice if it worked that way, but it doesn't. It's up to the fishermen. It's up to Jesus to reach down into the waters and catch the fish to save you. It's up to Jesus who reaches into and takes on flesh into this world of sin and darkness. It's up to Jesus to dive even into the depths of hell for you, to save you. To catch you, to bring you aboard his boat, his ark of the church. To do for you that which is even greater than you could ever imagine or ask for. All of your sins are forgiven. All of your evil, all of your faults are overcome. He takes you from being a lost and condemned fish, unable to do anything right, unable to catch even one fish, and to make you into fishers of men, children of God, with a purpose, with a calling. He sends us with his word in this boat, in this ark of his church, with his power. His authority given to him over all of heaven and earth is given to us to speak his word, to deliver those gifts which he wins for us on that cross to all people, to give to them the same forgiveness of sins, life and salvation which are given to you, to use them as his tools and his instruments to catch more fish. His call to catch fish, to be the church, is by no means insignificant. It's not easy, it's not convenient, it is not simple. It is no small task, task, but at his command, by his word, we are able to do far more than we could ever imagine. We are able to catch more fish than we could ever think possible. We are able to save more people than we would even possibly think. That is his call to Simon. That is the Lord's call to his church. That is Christ's call to you and to me, to be fishers of men, to catch, to save souls. Not by your own accord, not by your own power or your own authority, not by your own wit or will or persuasiveness, not by your own knowledge and your own strength, but by his, by trusting in his word to do what it says it's going to do, by trusting in God's word to be able to do more than we could ever imagine or possibly think or ask to trust that he can save far more than we would think, that he could save us and all people. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please stand. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.